This episode of Proper English is brought to you by phrasal verbs associated with sleep and the idiom burning the candle at both ends. OK, OK, keep it down, Millhouse. We can have some food. Let me get your slippers on. Millhouse, our cat, is pretty old. 18 years old, as a matter of fact. Isn't she, Dave? She is, Ali. Bless her little furry paws. And just like humans, as cats get older, they get a little more demanding. I think Millhouse forgets that we furless bipeds like to get some sleep at nights. Because when Millhouse is awake, well, everyone in the house is awake. True. You know, sometimes it's on the hour every hour. And Lady Millhouse will be scratching at the bedside table to get our attention. Problem is, once I'm awake, I find it pretty hard to get back to sleep. And this got me thinking about English vocabulary and sleep. Phrasal verbs, euphemisms, metaphors, sleep and the night take up quite a large proportion of our lives. So it's not really surprising that there are a lot of associated words and phrases. Yes, all right, Millhouse, I'm on me way. I can think of at least ten phrasal verbs to do with sleep. Oh, do you count them at night to help you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> no. Firstly, what you're referring to is the idiom counting sheep. That's right. And it's too early in the podcast for idiom of the week. Idiom of the week. Eee, it's never too early for an idiom. OK, very quickly then. Counting sheep is a very old idiom, going back to the 12th century in Islamic culture, apparently, describing something you do when you can't get to sleep. Insomnia. The condition of not being able to sleep. Or, like me, not being able to get back to sleep once Millhouse has woken me up. <laughs> it's traditionally combated by imagining an endless procession of identical sheep jumping over a fence. To get to sleep, you count them. Blade Runner. Hmm? You are so random sometimes. No, 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 no. Let me explain. Go on then. Blade Runner is a film by British film director Ridley Scott, starring Harrison Ford. And at the heart of it, it's about what it means to be human. Mm, deep. I know, right? Anyway, it's based on a novel by an American science fiction writer called Philip K. Dick. And what was the novel called? Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Ah. See? Hence why I said Blade Runner. Thanks for that. <laughs> anyway, counting sheep is a combination of meditation and self-hypnosis, I guess. Also, you use the phrasal verb to get to sleep there, meaning in order to or to arrive at the state of sleep, which gets us nicely back on track, I think. Right then. If you count enough sheep, eventually you might fall asleep and you know when you go to sleep sometimes you have that sensation of actually falling mm. which is perhaps where we get that particular phrase or verb from ah. also just as an aside you know when you have that falling feeling yeah and sometimes you kind of jump and wake up again yeah yeah it's horrible that's called a hypnic jerk. What? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a Shakespearean insult. It does a bit, doesn't it? Be gone, thou hypnic jerk. <laughs> uh, anyway, what else have we got? The bit before your hypnic jerk... Be gone! ...when you're falling asleep, sometimes accidentally dozing off, or nodding off, or dropping off. As in, I often used to find myself nodding off in staff meetings... Because they were so boring. <laughs> or I had a colleague who regularly used to drop off at his desk. Yeah, so did I. We used to go <coughs> so that he didn't get in trouble with boss. <laughs> <laughs> or as I get older, I often nod off in the middle of the afternoon. Mm, an afternoon nap. Yeah. A nap is a short sleep during the day. 
sometimes in your armchair, or maybe even going upstairs and lying down on the bed for a bit. Reminds me of my dad. Oh, yeah. My dad's habit of taking a nap or having a nap in the afternoon. <laughs> dad's napping skills were strong. It was well known among his friends. In fact, he was so famous for his napping habits round our way that taking an afternoon nap was known as having a Dougie. Mm -hmm. Because Dougie is short for Douglas, which was my dad's name. Oh, lovely Doug. What else is there? Oh, yeah, you've already said one. Wake up. Oh, yeah. Meaning to stop sleeping. As in, I wake up every half hour or so some nights because Millhouse wants feeding or just wants some attention. Oh, but we love her though, don't we? We do. Wake up is an instruction too. Wake up! Millhouse's early morning meowing could be interpreted as her way of saying, Wake up! And the opposite instruction to wake up? Get to sleep! The hissed instruction from a tired parent when the kids are all giddy and excited because they have friends staying the night, sleeping over, having a sleepover. Mm, often accompanied by, Do you know what time it is? Ten past two, Mum. <laughs> I can hear you saying that. That was a cheeky monkey. <laughs> of course, the problem with going to bed late is that getting out of bed is quite difficult. Mm. To be honest, it's always difficult for me because regular listeners will know it's well documented that I love my bed. True enough. I reckon you could easily stay in bed all day. Mm. Meanwhile, I would get dreadfully bored. I'd have no one to talk to, not even Millhouse, because being a cat of advanced years, she spends most of the daylight hours fast asleep. Mm. Having people sleep over often leads to oversleeping, sleeping in. Alice's favourite. <laughs> mm. Sleeping in can sometimes be when you sleep longer than you wanted. Something I can never imagine. Too much sleep? Never going to happen. See? It's sometimes nice to sleep in on a Sunday morning. But for me, most days, when I wake up, I'm up. If we'd been out on the town with our friends, you know, had a few too many drinks, dancing until the early hours, stayed up until dawn, that sort of thing, it's highly likely that we would sleep through the alarm in those circumstances, to be honest. Got to get your beauty sleep, haven't you? Although... Obviously, I'm beautiful enough already. You are. It's all that sleep. Thank you. I think. So, how many phrasal verbs did we use there? You can rewind and listen as many times as you want or need. Count them all up and pop the number on an email to us at Proper English... Or one word. ...at sapo.pt. And if you get it right, we'll give you a mention in next week's episode. Yay! Now it's time for Idiom of the Week. Again. Idiom of the Week? So, burning the candle at both ends. We were talking about going out for a drink and staying up late. But if you do it a little too often, and you're up late every night, and then up early for work every morning, living your life a little too energetically is something you really can't sustain for a long time, because you're burning the candle at both ends. Yeah. So where does it come from then, Dave? Well, I'm glad you asked, Ali. Back in the day, when we didn't have electricity, we used candles to see what we were doing at night. And of course, the sensible way to light a candle is at the top. Mm. So it slowly burns vertically downwards. What other way would you burn it? If you burnt the candle horizontally... At both ends. Of course, it would burn out much more quickly. Exactly. I see. So if you burn the candle at both ends, you're using up your resources too quickly. It's a waste of resources too, isn't it? It is indeed. In fact, this idiom was first used in the 18th century to describe somebody who was foolish or wasteful with money. Ah. But over the centuries, it's evolved to mean living life at too fast a pace. And here we are at the end of another episode of Proper English. As always, we hope you've had fun listening in on our conversation. And whether you're a new listener 
or a regular subscriber, why not get in touch with us? You can email us at properenglish or one word at sapo.pt or you can ask us questions on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook if you have them. And don't forget to tell everyone you know about us. Friends, family, anyone who's studying or learning English. And make sure you like this episode and leave us a nice review. And subscribe to us on your favourite podcast app. And it's worth bearing in mind that every episode we've done is available out there, not just the latest ones. So you can listen to everything we've ever done as many times as you like. As many times as you like. As many times as you like. So, until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me too. And thank you for listening to Proper English. English. I started writing this episode after Millhouse woke me up at five o'clock this morning. It's just after ten now. And she's fast asleep beside me on the settee. Bless.